すめなのだ兵士を怒かれ兵士を叫ぶ兵士を叩け Welcome to the finale of our humans only challenge. And before anything else, holy crap, thank you all so much for your support. Our first video got us monetized, 500,000 views, and 5,000 subscribers. That is crazy. Thank you all so much. Now, this challenge was an absolute nightmare and roller coaster at the end. Did I beat the game? I guess you'll have to watch and find out. But before that, we have an ad read. Now before we get started, I also wanted to give a special thanks to Boostroid for reaching out to our small channel and being our first partnered collaboration. Remember when I deleted Apex and CS2 so I could finish recording my first video? Well, I also deleted my dear waifus. Not dear enough, I guess. But that's okay, because Boostroid is a cloud gaming service that allows you to play many of your most favorite games, including Power World, on any device as long as you have an internet connection. All without needing to download. I've tested Boostroid myself and was really surprised by how smooth the experience was. When I tested for Apex, there was extremely low latency and almost no stuttering. Cloud gaming services including Boostroid is highly dependent on your internet connection as well as the device you're using so performance may vary. The service itself costs about 11 bucks a month, but please note Boostroid does not provide free access to licensed games. Any games marked as payment required, you will need to have a purchase license copy from an official distributor such as Steam. If this interests you and you want to support my channel, please use the link in the description and don't forget to test your speed before purchasing. Okay, starting right back where we left off, it's time for us to mine some ore. Some people are telling me just to get some ore and smelt it with a fire pail, but that's not what this challenge is about. See this number right here? That's the amount of grass I touch and girls I get. Let's keep it at zero. So I have a few ideas. After learning all of Bushi's spawn mechanics, I choose an area to set up my farm with a lot of spawn points. From what I can tell, Pels will try to spawn as high as possible, and if it's high enough, they won't jump from their platforms. So I got to work and put platforms everywhere they spawned. I was testing my spawn points for the first time when a shiny Bushi spawned in. Wait, is that the Bushi? It is! Look at that. Wow. That's right, you thought this was gonna be a Bushi farm. But it's gonna be a shiny Bushi farm. I got him to TP up some stairs, and killing him got me to level 31. Around this point, I realized I was making a big mistake. Spawning mechanics and building? In the first five minutes? Oh no. My audience retention. My YouTube career is in jeopardy! By the way, I call this design the diving board. They don't want your designs! Leave the masses uneducated. Bing bang bloop, here's the final design. I shoot them. They TP. They die. Tutorial on YouTube. Then you just reset. Hey, good thing Bushi aren't human, right? Nothing like humans. That's probably good enough. That's more money than my ex-wife left me with. Oh shoot, they're despawning. Where's my ukulele? Guys, I'm sorry. This was never actually a humans only run. You see, my humans... <laughs> They're actually Wumpopa Tods. Anyways, if you think this design is pretty good, just wait until the end of the episode. We have a long list of stuff we have to do. Kill trees, mine bosses, and smoke some weeds. I have a plan, and these weeds will bear fruit to something amazing. Since we're so rich now, I think it's time for us to get a second hooker. We also make a large toolbox so our humans can craft faster. 
It is so nice having two grappling hooks. With that, we repair our armor and tools and get ready to head into the dungeon. The dungeon's actually pretty nice because most of the rooms clears itself. We beat the boss Lavander using some cheese and we are graciously rewarded with an uncommon attack pendant. Coincidentally, Lavander will actually play a pretty big role later. So dramatic. Time for us to explore. Oh no. How is Nanami walking? Well, let us relog. I hate how this stamina works sometimes. Jeffrey just invited me to go fishing. Nothing immoral going on here, just fishing for humans. Human trafficking, you could say. He might look young, but our company is just practicing DEI and equal opportunities for employment. Right before the day ends, we're able to find a shiny kativa and unlock the desolate church waypoint. We sleep away the night, and get right back to it the very next morning. So many berries! The Electric Yellow Mohawk Brotherhood. They are pretty strong in number. So Masanda Lux is pretty easy to dodge. Nothing too scary about the guy. We pass by a black marketeer and try to recruit him. Unfortunately, the NPCs do not have anti-cheat enabled. Hacks! And this game proves to us why it's in early access. Oh no 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 no. Oh my god. We need some XP, so the very next day we head into our backyard dungeon. Now did you know dinosaurs are birds, and all birds can actually fly? You're being lied to about flightless birds. We try our best to capture some cave grenadiers, but they exhaust our balls. No. Eh, why not? We managed to walk this prehistoric chicken into hot lava just like his ancestors. No wonder they went extinct. We collect the rest of the goodies in the dungeon and happen to get an uncommon handgun schematic. Slanty. Although we're underleveled, we really need XP, so we go for the big boy Wumpo Baton. Wumpo Baton seems to be pretty easy, but he's just way too chonky. We use these trees to break his pathing a bit and start to fight a battle of attrition. Rest in peace, Nanami. Ooh, aye, aye, aye. Level 32. We make it home, and I think it's time for some upgrades. We make ourselves some metal armor, sell all of our goodies for ammo, and take on the beacon. 
Now if we're really lucky, Beacon has around a 2.5% drop rate for a legendary handgun schematic, but I have a different plan for the end game. Beacon has a few fast attacks, but it's not too hard to dodge. The fight just comes down to whether or not I have enough ammo. There we go. No luck. For the next part of my grand scheme, we're gonna need a lot of stone, so I make an AFK farm. Now I'm wearing two pendants of diligence right now, and it actually increases the speed of getting stone. With the pendants, it takes five hits, and without the pendants, it takes six. Very cool. We also make a logging farm, but there's a good chance we won't need it. I went to work, like real work, and came back with 660 stone. I think we're good to leave this on overnight. Okay, so we have a lot of exploring to do. This kissy face over here, and this face over here, we have big plans for. But first we're gonna wanna hit base level 15, so we make a wheat farm. We make a temporary flour mill and hit base level 11 and base level 12. We make two cushions and hit base level 13. For our next upgrade, we need a power generator and a sphere assembly line, which costs, you guessed it, more ingots. Let's scout out the kissy face area. Did you know fish can fly? So I'll explain it later when I build here, but this area in particular is very special. You can actually see two different groups of pals spawn in the exact same spot. We'll use this to our advantage later. Wow, look at all these toko toko. Did you know that turtles can- We enter a dungeon and find a boss Rayhound. We hit them with the usual cheese and collect all of the chests in the dungeon. Indiana Jones! That is our goal. A very big beach. Oh no. It's just like last time. Yes, the hardest boss in the game, large cliffs. We got a Suzaku over there, a Dazi over there. I would love to do a necklace only run. Let me know if you guys want that. We are getting pretty close. We have made it to the dune shelter. Thank you for the shrooms. Hey, you look like a candidate for our diversity, equity, and inclusion quota. This guy has a nice hat I want. I'm just not sure which one it is. We'll buy two undershirts for now. I can barely see, but this is the Marcus Tower. After a long day, we finally make it home and sleep the night away. We go back to the desert and try to run some dungeons. Turns out, it's just like our Bushi farm area. We got some eternal pyre martyrs and some pyre knocks. Not, knocks. 
Yes. We reach the boss room. And what is that title? Perpetual Procrastinator. That's literally me. Except I didn't procrastinate on this video, I swear. I literally have full-time work and spent a lot of time on this video. I know it took three weeks. I literally didn't procrastinate, I swear. It takes a long time, I swear. I, I wanted to get it out in like two weeks, but I couldn't. I I'm like on day 300 and it takes like 50 hours to edit this thing. I'm not making excuses, I'm just... After some effort, we beat the three Doom Lords and collect our spoils. Shortly after, we go into a different dungeon, and you know what? We'll try to fight a Nightwing. Yeah, the thing was too tanky, so we'll choose the Nightwing. This is good rhythm game practice. I have to hit the wing every time it flaps. I'm missing. All that for 10,000 XP. I don't know how to say this guy's name. Va valet? Val valet? 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 Violet? This guy was very tanky. Yeah, to spare you guys, here's just every time we hit him. We'll also speed it up. Bro, our pistol broke in one hit. Pain. With that, we go back to our base and craft the sphere assembly line. Next is weapon assembly line and high quality hot spring, which I think we can do both right now. Indeed we can. Weapon assembly line, and we'll put our hot spring over here. I think that looks pretty nice. Now if you're wondering why I build so much in a challenge world, I feel like it makes each world more unique and important. It's not just about beating the challenge, but more about the journey and storytelling. Yes, I could get a fire pal at this point, and yes, I could have captured all of the tower bosses with the glitch, but I feel like that just removes all the creativity and personality from the run, so I'll just keep doing what I usually do. Level 15, we can finally make a third base. Third base isn't cheating, right XGF? I forgot to introduce her last video. My XGF is the gossiping villager. She loves the gossip, but forget her, it's time to look for someone better. On the outskirts of the PIDF tower, we find him. Remember in the last video where I said we needed a rocket launcher dude or a guy with a toko toko strap to their chest? Well, we might not find the latter, this guy has a rocket launcher. Oh mama mia. In the freaking ball. You. Oh, thank goodness. I was running out of balls. With that, we got our first Syndicate Elite. Looks like everyone's dying today. Wait, 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 I'm not ready. I was drinking a soda. C. 
Syndicate Elite. Let's see how much damage he does. We take him out against Relaxerus Lux, and he does about 220 damage. Next, we take out Nanami, and he does about 130 damage. I guess Nanami has been dethroned, and we'll have to sacrifice another 116 humans for our best Syndicate Elite. What do we name our first Syndicate Elite? He has rocket launchers, just like NASA. So we'll call him... Nasasibaka. <laughs> that is so bad. With all of the people we've recruited, I think it's time for us to make a viewing cage. I have a little bit of trouble finding an area to put it, so I just make a dedicated place for everyone. We must find more women to fulfill our DEI quota, and then we will give them 70% of what the men make, because they are better workers. Every time I repair my armor and tools, it costs about 80 iron. It's a little bit of a chore, but it's a good thing we can mine Gushi. Instead of fixing our makeshift handgun, let's upgrade to an uncommon one and see how far we can go with it. I didn't do that. Anyways, I buy a graduate cap so we can have faster work speed. And since we made a handgun, we're gonna have to farm more metal again. Are you bored of seeing me collecting metal yet? Wowzers, I'm losing my sanity. Hooray for metal! Let's spend it on something very useful. We go back to the desert to look for the best of the best. Unfortunately, my overwhelmingly potent masculine aura is way too strong for these elites, so we end up killing all of them by accident. We head back home so I can waste more ingots on my armor. With my armor repaired, let's try our first level 40 boss. So her attacks are pretty easy to read, and she's not as tanky as I thought she'd be. After a few minutes, we were able to beat her without any issue. Next is Mamorist. He should be a pretty easy fight, we just kind of forgot about him. A bit tankier than I thought, but no real issues. Back home we upgrade to capture power level 6. Do not insert holocaust joke here. Oh no. I've become one of them. No! 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 My arch nemesis. Ne ne my arch nemesis. Incline and talking. I feel like since COVID, I just can't articulate anymore. Yet here I am talking to you guys. Hello there. Oh man, we are finally out of the crack. And this feels like deja vu. Ooh, these guys are pretty strong. So we're traveling north to unlock our last boss tower. Of course it just so happens to be on top of a freaking mountain. The crack. Yeah, this area is so slopey I can't even jump or grapple back onto the wall. I just have to climb the whole way and use foundations. But look at this pro move. Wow. I know, how am I even single? Probably because I have no social skills. 
Final boss tower unlocked. We're not ready for it yet, but it's good to be able to teleport here later. Since we're already here, let's just fight Ice King Paka. If he's anything like regular King Paka, he should be no problem. King Paka has given up. That felt like bullying. He didn't even want to fight back. Human trafficking? Yes. Bullying? Not on my watch. We're back in the desert to get more elites. After all, we want a super elite. So it turns out most of the passives on humans don't even work. I have two guys with vanguard in my party, and my damage with and without them are the same. Unlucky. Alright, let's see how far we can get with Axel and Orzerk. We have to beat the last three tower bosses. And let me tell you, it is gonna be quite the challenge. We're gonna have to level up and get some resources. And I haven't forgotten this guy. This guy is actually evil. Not only does he cheat and have wall hacks, he also traffics pals. Now killing this guy is great because he drops a lot of money on death. After giving him a good beating, we let him off the noose. With our new hard earned cash, we purchased 500 bullets and go on our merry way back to the snow biome. We try to take on Lyleen Noct, but she's out of our league. S tier waifu. Oh no, I got greedy. Ah. Before going back to retrieve our stuff, I name our second syndicate elite Elon Musketeer because SpaceX. We go back into Lyleen's chamber, but she's being a sussy baka. In order to retrieve our stuff and not be killed, we re-log to lose aggro. Yeah, she's a D-tier waifu. Luckily enough for us, we're still alive, and we're able to get our stuff back. We just need to re-log one more time. Freedom! See ya, sucker. We fight some more bosses, but we only get 20,000 XP, and this boss is 12 levels higher. In the endgame, we're gonna need a few million to get to level 50, so we need to figure something out. Back to the desert. Chests and balls. Yin and yang. With all the spheres we get from this area, we're able to capture us a few Syndicate Elites. Slay Girl! Yeah. Holy crap. Somehow I keep on getting ambushed. Oh. I was like, why am I hearing boss music? Oh my god. Oh man. Yeah. 
I want it. Greed. Greed. I haven't learned my lesson. Ow. It's okay. Oh, not even close. No, 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 no. Oh, we're, we're good, we're good. Oh, we made it out. And it's already morning. How relatable. So right now, this guy is the best we got. He is the elite amongst the elite. Hence, creme de la creme. So fancy he is. So right now we have 10 syndicate elites. Not enough for your mom, but we'll test all of them out and level them up and see who's the strongest. If we're satisfied, we will give him the honor of having another 116 humans condensed into his body. Hey, I'm very sorry for all of the your mom jokes. As an advocate of gender equality, I will get to your dad. Time for a little redesign. We closed off the space to act more like a little office, it's also where the NPCs like to go. I cleared up some space, and a tree grew. Confine it to a pot. Potted plant. Modernism. It looks ugly. It might look good in a flower bed, but we don't have room for that. Hidden lighting? Imagine if we could hide this campfire in a tree. Wait, that's in the tree. That's not a safety hazard. Hopefully it looks good at night. I made a bench stair thing so we could access the roof from this side. I have an idea. How many ideas do I have? I want a large overhang like this, but I have platforms already on the ground so it's hard to line up. No. Also no. We've done it. The height is a little bit off, but just don't look at it. Feels cozy. Kinda added like a hallway thing, just to add some dimension. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you prefer to be an NPC in the Matrix, or a free human in the wild? If you're a brokey like me working a 9 to 5, you know, it could be worse. You could be like these guys. So we use 600 spheres to traffic 5 boxes of humans. With 30 humans per box, that is 150 humans, or 148 if you subtract the last two. That's probably pretty good, and should be enough for your mom. The PAL Condenser. Using some ethical methods of testing, we found out that this Syndicate Elite in particular is our strongest, he has the highest damage, and his attack is the highest, so it makes things simple. Well, let's get started. From 441 attack to 529. We have done it again. We have some extra disposable humans, so let's also dump them into my team. Throughout the heaven and earth, he alone is the honored one. We go to the power statue and upgrade his attack as much as we can, and then also a little bit of his health and defense. It says Elon Musk gets here here for some reason, but don't worry, it's selected on Gojo. Unfortunately, now the real grind begins. The XP grind. Rise and shine. We kill bosses. Eat. Sleep and repeat. 
We have a lot of extra syndicate elites, but I do have a plan for them. Because they're so elite, we rename all of them. Now we have our own militia. We're level 35, but we try to take on Anubis. After all, we could beat King Paka without any issues. Things were going pretty well, he was taking a lot of damage. But then, look at this! My whole team is dead. Well, that didn't go according to plan. Let's try another idea. Hehe, <laughs> look at them all. All of our grenadiers and our rocket launcher dudes. A raid! Flying hyena pails. That's like our worst matchup. You know, we'll still fight them. Let's see how this goes. I am speechless. Oh my god, that is the best sound ever. Anyways, that was a disappointment. Our guys didn't fight back at all. We'll see if we can fix that. But for now, let's get some more metal because everything is broken. Three bushi! One. Two, three. Thirty-six. I just got two shinies in a row. All right, the bell is on attack. And Anubis is right there. Let's see if my guys actually attack him. They're going! Attack! Oh gosh. Uh. <laughs> I'm getting raided. And my followers are just huddling around at Nubis. This is why you hire a harem of women. Unloyal bastards. Well, I need more XP. And that means more bosses. We give Dinosum Lux a whirl. His attacks are easy to read and pretty easy to dodge. Considering Dinosum's level 47, Gojo and Creme de la Creme's doing very good damage. Ooh, I almost died. The cold's gonna kill me. Wait, no, the heat's gonna kill me. Oh. More bosses. More. 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 Even more. Ooh, a rare attack pendant. So we take a little break from boss fighting and go explore Canada. We try to capture an executioner, but he executes us. Yeah! Lots of L's today. Also, we're lagging.
got my stuff back. And these chests in this area are also very good. I feel like there has to be something up there, right? Like a chest or a lift monk effigy? <gasps> I found it! You're missing dad. He's right there. Somewhere where the milk is. Somewhere down there. Oh no! Oh man, that was, that was all calculated. Greed! I want it! Oh my gosh! Suzaku. Yeah. This guy's a pushover. Gojo can actually hit him consistently. That was easy. Menesting. More like womanesting. Or non binesting. I am so funny. My bad, Gojo. This was another level 40 boss that was pretty easy to beat. Upon killing a Syndicate Crusher, we hit level 38. We put our third tail box down in case we die to any boss. Let's hope Blazemut is a pushover just like everyone else. He is indeed a pushover. Look at how much XP that filled for a level 49. Are you a pushover? No, he is not a pushover. Its body becomes a blade upon death, to be taken up by the next generation. If someone other than Ibushi wields this blade, the soul within torments them until they are driven mad. Alright, I am so sick of repairing my metal armor, so we're just going to downgrade. That is some baloney! Baloney! Alright, we have a game plan. Stick by the pillars, and blast them in the face. Oh my god.
Let's go! Finally! Maybe you guys could tell I was getting super stressed. Wow! Progress! My Blicky is almost dead again. But we did that fight without metal armor. Wow, 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 wow. First boss kill. Shallow water Jormantide. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage. Hey Anubis, can we hang out? Eh. Well, I guess we're fighting him. Good damage. This is going much smoother than imagined. I just have to remember to recall and dodge his charge attack. Anubis. More like a new BS. That was so smooth. It feels like we're finally winning a little bit. This is also Gojo's last attack upgrade. So I also beat Deepwater Jormantide, because we're masochists, or something. And yeah, I need more metal. But hey, we can downgrade our capture level one more time. Now that my capture rate is decreased, I'm able to capture a Syndicate Crusher. Woo! Let's go! I didn't know there was a flamethrower executioner. Hey, level 40. Wait, this guy's tanky. He's like Anatoly. I want him. Oh, 
Oh no 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 no, he's gonna die. No 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 no, stop, stop. Chuck ball. No! Oh my gosh. Sibilex, I will massacre your race. Wait, should I be racist or sexist? I'm kidding guys, don't cancel me. My career has just started. I love women. Look at my last thumbnail. Wait, no, don't look at my last thumbnail. I, 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 I will refrain from genocide. Yes, I am an ethical person. Sidewalk. So we have Thlogger and Logs here. Both of them have logging foremen. But yeah, we get the same amount of wood, same amount of fiber, same speed. So, you might be wondering, why am I mining the wood? Well, I don't actually need wood, I need fiber. Why? Because I have explosive diarrhea. Because I plan on using explosives. Each grenade I make costs 10 fiber. And we're gonna want around 666 of them. So, let's get mining. Okay, see those trees over there? Gone. How about these woods? Disappear. Disappear. Your father? Wait, look at this. Behold! Stone that fruits! While we mine weed and smoke wood, Nanami is at base cooking grenades. We do what is hopefully our last run of metal. Two hundred fourteen. That should be enough, right? Let's condense Blaze It, Agent 47, and Anatoly by one stage. That way everyone's condensed. Level 41. Unfortunately, this is taking too long. <gasps> I hit the tech! So this is one idea I had, but I'm realizing that we can't pick up any humans, so we can't place them into these turrets. Maybe if we're attacked, they'll go use them, yeah. but we'll see. I can't believe we just got a rare handgun schematic. It might be worth it if we just need a slight upgrade. Alright, we're gonna try this again. I gotta remember to dodge backwards on that attack. Oof. Looks like the damage is still there. Let's see if we can do this. Not exactly the strategy I want to use, but there's a reason I do this that I'll explain later on. At this point, I just want her dead. I will kill her legit at a higher level later. Easy peasy. Not even close. Astagon is the final boss under level 50. Let's just beat him if we can. Oh. We're good. We're not good. We're not good.
Oh, we might have died there, but we'll take what we can get. All right, let's have a serious talk. Let me introduce you to Madame Geringleraf. So I've been looking for ways to increase my XP more quickly. Unfortunately, this farm I found on YouTube is too slow. She's still very cute though. So here's what we're gonna do. It already takes me several hours just to level up one time by killing endgame alpha bosses. Since we beat all the alpha bosses already that's under level 50, I think we should be allowed to adopt Nuzlocke's rare candy rules going forward. We will crank up the XP multiplier until we reach the recommended level for the next gym leader. In this case, it would be Marcus's boss tower at level 45. We're not allowed to go over this level. All this does is save me time so I can upload to you faster, more than once a year. If you guys have any other ideas, let me know in the comments. So let's go kill us some bosses. Level 45, that felt so much faster. All right, back to normal. Yeah, so that took us eight or nine boss fights, which would have been 160. Either way, I'm level 45 now, and I have been dreading this fight. Why? You'll see. My guy can't hit him. Yep, this was gonna be a purely me fight. Gojo is just too short. Yeah. Well, either way, this is just a test run. But this might be the hardest fight in the game. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a rough one. Why use aim trainers when Pal World is $30? Anyways, we're smoking weeds and getting the last bit of fiber we need. Behold! Stone that fruits! Sorry, I, I already used that joke. I have smoked all of the weed. There's no weed. Where's the weed? I don't know what to do with all of this wood, so we're just gonna discard it all. The weed's back! Yeah, these small guys are way more efficient for fiber because you get them on the first hit and you can get multiple of them. And they're satisfying. I have removed all the vegetation. And now there's not a comatose person in sight. Shoot, I got distracted. Behold! So remember I said this desert isn't normal. And that's because of these three spots. These three spots spawn double, which is great for a farm. The pails they spawn are even better. You have Toko Toko for gunpowder, and Lavander for fulfilling your weird kinks. Just kidding, we're after one of her 1% drops, particularly the memory wiping medicine. Using it will allow us to respec so we're more built into damage and less into utility. Even if I weren't doing a challenge run, this farm would be very practical. Both gunpowder and the memory wiping medicine are a pain to make. Also, if you have a Catrice on field, both Toko Toko and Lavander are neutral types so you can get increased drops from them. With the Pale Box, you can reload the area very quickly. If you don't want to use a Pale Box, you can also relog. After a very lively night with a bunch of Lavander, we finally got it. <gasps> Let's go! 
This is our second rare drop, but it still came early, so it saved us a lot of time. With our mare, with our fiber farming, we're able to queue up 228 grenades. Plus 24. With our lavander farm, at least we have one practical farm. After thinking about it, I can make this farm better. Four blocks wide, and I can reach the far spawns. Using this elevator trick, we can go 18 blocks up. Credit to Eifjian for this trick, I will link his video in the description. Once we're all the way up, since we have foundations on the ground, we can go four blocks this way and an extra two if we wanted to. 2x2 two two for a pale box. 2 windows. And then the same setup as before. We're gonna use a tall bookshelf, a bench, and then a metal stool. Testron. For symmetry, we're gonna go up the other side. Also, we're gonna use blank walls since windowed walls slow you down. And there you go, my newest and final design, hopefully. So someone in my comments mentioned to me that Pen King acts just like Catrus, where fire pals will drop more items. Which makes this farm just a little bit more viable. Not for me though. By the way, I tried some designs where Bushi could walk off, but a lot of times he'll just sit there. So this idea was a no-go. Okay, enough nerd stuff. Let's wipe our brain. Yeah, we'll do all attack for now. If we want anything else, we have five levels for it. Ooh, let's see how this goes. Okay, instead of repairing, I think we're going to upgrade slightly. We don't need that much more damage. We can also make rush or bacon and eggs or omelets. This will give us a 10% increase in attack. We have finished cooking our handgun, and it is a fair bit stronger. It also has two extra rounds in the chamber. Metal armor, and let's bring some backup grenades just in case. Oh man. Just kidding, we got this.
We're so close. Out of ammo right at the end. Woo! Let's go! No break for us. Let's find out just how difficult the last boss is. As expected, we're not doing that much damage, but Gojo is at least able to hit him, which is a big win. Right now, what's most important is to learn his moves. Alright, let's level up and give it one last push. We are on day 383. Some of it may have been AFK, but regardless, it has been a long journey. For the last time, let's go beat some bosses. We're under the map, and there's water. Wait, we're like actually under the map. Well, I am curious. If we die, our bag should respawn outside the dungeon. We're back at base. Lyleen! I have come for revenge! Jesus. We do so much more damage just for being a few levels higher. Level 50! By the way, we have spec 2 into stamina, and that's because dodging is crucial. Let's do a damage test. Grenades do 320. Headshots do 220. Body shots do 140. Let's see what Gojo does. 1,000. That's huge. That's 0.5% of his health every hit. Either way, two, 200 hits from Gojo will kill him. All good. Good info. Ooh, nice. Now we have both versions of this. Oh wow, that is so lucky. I was killing bosses so I could buy more ammo, but now we got a little bit more damage. We are in our final stages of prep. Ice grenades. 
A little bit extra defense for Gojo. Let's eat our omelet, put on the amulet, and let's beat the final boss tower. Our game plan goes like this. Stick by the pillar for certain attacks, keep Gojo alive because he's going to do a significant portion of damage, walk as much as possible because we don't have that many rolls, and if we ever get into any trouble, we'll use our nades to try and CC him. We'll try to save our nades in case we die, but our handgun headshots has a higher DPS anyways. Should have recalled him there. We'll speed things up a bit. And we're out. Time for nades. It's like, um, animation cancel where I can't send out Gojo. Oh, I missed a batch of them. That's fine. Jump, jump, jump here. Yes! Gojo's dead. I have 1 HP, I just need my shields back. I just need my shields back one more time. Oh my god, the shield just came back. That is so clutch. Yeah. 
and it's holy. It's all you. Complete the mission. Yes! We freaking did it! Ah, all the pain and misery. What the heck, man? Oh, jeez. Although we beat the last tower boss, our challenge is not over yet. We have three last alpha bosses to beat. 200 nades and a pistol. Let's go. The game plan remains the same. Keep Gojo alive, concuss with grenades if we need it, and run our ammo first in case we die. Frostallion is pretty easy to read, doesn't hit too hard. The only thing is, she's very tanky. Midway through our fight, I'm quite confident we won't lose here, so I start throwing my nades. That's not good. We're actually close to dying. Let's go. Leave it to me to almost screw up at the end, but we got it. Next up is Jetrigan. This guy is very fast, so let's do our best to stay alive. Since Frostallion was so tanky, I remember to bring my poison crossbow to this fight. I need three rolls for this attack. And that still hits me. Every so often, I'll throw an ice nade and a shock nade to concuss them. Since we're super squishy, we want to be as efficient as possible in shutting down Jetrigan's attacks. Shout out to this tree by the way, this thing is made of bedrock. Oh my god, how am I not hit? Take my last nades. Let's go! One more boss, and we're done. Foodies. Can we beat Pal World using only humans? Alright, here we go. So we do what any sane person would do, and wait it until night so we only have to fight Necromus.
All right, we got this. Speed it up. This bastard's running away. He left his wife behind. Just like your dad. We found him. He was doing some weed. Let's go. That's half the fight. I think the rest should be pretty easy. Just what a finale. Humans versus pals. Yeah. How poetic is that? It is time to end it. It's time to throw hands! I guess not. All good. We freaking did it, boys. Oh my gosh, we did it. What a journey. Thank you all so much for watching. This video probably took me over 70 hours to edit and I'm very sorry for how late it is. As time goes on, I'll be better at the game and better at editing these videos, so I think there's a lot more to come. Also remember that shiny lamb ball? We're doing shinies only next. Many of you guys in the comments wanted that, so that's what we're doing. We weren't able to get all the humans we wanted this run, but we did get the strongest. That's right, it's your mom. Just kidding, just kidding. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.